got the fires behind us on Mount Rockpool today and the fires are lit. We brought some grass fed steaks in. The lovely Corey Costello, uh, executive chef of Rockpool, has chosen um, a couple of steaks. Corey, thanks so much for having us today. No worries, Penny. I was just attending to our fire there. So, mate, I think it's a it's an awesome thing one to be here in the restaurant, and also um, so good to be on on this side in your kitchen. It's really exciting for me. Thanks. Thanks for thanks for coming in, mate. Tell us a bit about the restaurant. You've been 12, 13 years. Thirteen years in um, in two weeks, actually. So. Uh, pretty pretty special time here. It's a uh, it's a it's a big big restaurant and a bit of an institution for Sydney. You know the uh, the dining room's quite quite famous now. So really privileged to be here. We brought in some Scotch fillets today. Obviously all grass fed, some white fillets and some flank steaks. You're going to cook these for us and um, tell us a little bit about the difference of, of each of the steaks. If you were going to choose a steak, what would you choose? What are you looking for if you were to walk into the straight up sirloin? Yeah, yeah straight up, straight up. I'm going to grab a scotchy or, yeah. or a ribeye on the bone. Um, I just, I love the different textures and you get with the meat. So the, the spinalis down here, you know, that's, that's the Rolls Royce part. Yep. For um, sure. You know, the eye, the eye is great as well. And I, I just prefer to eat that because it's, you've got a lot of the tenderness that you get from the fillet, but you just get a, so much more flavour from a from a rib and from a from a scotch. Tell me about dry aged beef and what the process is around that and why um, that makes for better beef. Well, I mean, I mean, dry aging. What it, what it's doing is pretty much taking taking the the muscle and the the juice that's inside it, and it's not blood. It's it's just juice. All the blood's come out of the animal. It's just the the actual liquid that's inside the meat or inside the muscle. And by what what it does by dry aging is it firms it up. So all the all the the moisture that's in it starts to set inside it. So when you cook it, it doesn't drop out as much, um, and you get a more intense flavour. So, and it usually it's, it's a bit easier to cook as well when it's a little bit dry aged because you don't get that, um, it doesn't sort of run out on the grill or, or on your pan. Yep. I, I find it just so much more intense in flavor. We're gonna do one in the pan and one on the fire? Is one on the go? fire, yeah, and one in the pan, just so we can have a look at the differences of how they cook. When you cook them in a pan with a little bit of butter and sort of nappe the butter over the top of them, uh, it's a different cooking method to cooking it you know, on, on a fire or on a grill, on a barbecue at home. We'll start off with a little bit of oil in our pan. This pan's been preheated. It's nice and hot. You can see the oil is running and it's starting to smoke straight away. If you don't have smoke straight away in your pan, it's definitely not hot enough. So we'll put a little bit more oil in that pan. So if we have a look now, we've got a really nice crust and color on that one. So it's nice and brown. Now we're gonna add the magic. We're gonna add all of this butter, and then when we add that butter, we're gonna turn it down to pretty much a low temperature. We'll melt that butter. We'll get it nice and foamy. And then we're gonna baste our steak. Now, obviously you don't eat all of this butter. It's purely just for cooking purposes. Now we're gonna put a little bit of thyme in there just to season up that butter and give it some flavor. So we've just got this on a very gentle heat so you want to have that really hot at the beginning, sear up your steak, and then once it's seared off and you've got the brown that you, you, you sort of desire, then you start with the basting. Usually a fillet like this size would be about five or six minutes for medium rare. And you can sort of start to feel it. So when you, when you, when you fill that steak at the beginning, as opposed to now, it's just firmed up a lot. Yep. So look, that's pretty much ready um, right now. We'll just rest that up there and it's, that'll still be nice and juicy on the inside. We'll let that rest. So the, traditionally, it's for as long as you cook the steak, you should rest it for the same amount of time. Okay. Scotch fillet is going to cook a lot faster. So we're not going to go through that uh, uh, as heavy a basting process as that. So we're going to get this pan a little bit hotter than what we did for when we were cooking the fillet. But essentially, it's going to be the same method. So a little bit of salt if they're on the bone. Yep. Yeah. Off, the, off the forequarter of the animal. So the, the muscle that runs up the middle of your back uh, it's the, the middle of your back is the sirloin, I guess you'd say, and then the one that's up the top above your ribs, that's the uh, that's the ribeye. Your favourite cut on a good balance of flavour and texture? Good balance of flavour and texture. So it's got it's got sort of, flavour-wise, you'd call it like a seven out of 10, and then, um, you know, tender-wise, you'd probably get a seven as well. 
So, you know, something like a fillet flavor-wise would be a, a, about a five, yep. but tenderness Max. would be about a 10. Very, very hot pan. Yep. If it doesn't sizzle when you put it in, yep. it's not hot enough. And it's usually the mis mistake of most junior chefs is to either overcrowd their pan yes. or overcrowd their pot, be it sauteing onions or vegetables or whatever, and especially with steak. So you can see already we're starting to get those, those beautiful, nice caramelized pieces on the steak. We'll just knock it down now because that was up very high. They so can have a look at that. That's a really nice crust in there. Yep. And that's, that's where you're going to get a lot of your flavor from. It, it's hot, hot at the start. And then once you get that crust, you turn it down. And that's, that's the really important part is it's just turning it down once it gets that crust. But a lot of people get very scared. And I mean, every single time I do it, I still get a bit worried. I'm like, oh, if I've gone too hot, yep. am I going to burn it? Um, but you can see and that was pretty hot. Yeah, that was um, well, and it's, it's actually pretty hard to burn a piece of meat. We'll do the same thing with this. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll knock this butter into it now. So again, as long as it's not too hot, you've got a lower heat now that the butter's involved. Lower heat, the butter's involved. Now you're just basting it, getting it to come up to temperature. That's pretty much done now. And you can sort of tell just because the way the meat sort of firmed up. So have a look at that. It's, uh, you can see the beautiful coloration on that meat. And that's what I mean. Just don't be scared to really Give it some. Well, when we're cooking with fire, you need you need to have a lot of heat. Because these, these steaks are three different thicknesses, the thinner one is gonna cook very quickly. So we need the highest possible heat. So when we get these flames coming through, we call them like the licks of the fire. They're, um, that's where we wanna cook something that's a very thin steak, something we wanna cook very quickly. So that's gonna be the hottest part of my flame, the hottest part of the grill. Um, where the bars are a little bit uh, not as white, not as, as white hot, that's a sort of good um, place for me to cook this, the, the scotchy fillet here. Nice heat. Like if your hand can sort of stay there for more than five seconds, you're probably not hot enough. Um, and then because we've got this thicker fillet, it's going to take a little bit longer to cook. We're going to cook that in a more gentle spot. So usually barbecues at home have got a bit of a hot spot on them or if you're cooking with a fire, you can work out where your hottest part is. Um, and you want to cook, your, you know, seal it off in your hottest part, yep. then move it to a gentle spot. Um, you always want to get that color um, on the steak and get that crust. Yep. That's what's going to make for you. That's what's going to make for your best steak. So we just want to we want to have a bit of pinkness uh, through the inside of it. So a really quick high heat, take it off, rest it, and then we'll carve it up. For these ones, this this fillet that's going to take sort of 10, 15 minutes. This one's probably going to take five minutes. This one's going to take two minutes. Once again, a little bit of salt. So don't don't be shy with the salt. So we'll get this uh, we'll get this flank onto this hottest part of the grill, as you can see, and that's what we're looking for. So next we'll put this scotchy on. The scotchy's going to go where it's a little bit more gentle, not that much more gentle though. And then over here, a little bit less heat again for our fillet. So we're going to get some nice scoring on this steak. So that is that is almost almost done. Two minutes, I'll rest it up. And if we just have a look at this one here, it's starting to get a little bit of color. And this fillet here should only have a couple of little grill marks there. So if you have a look at the grill marks, they're just sort of starting. This one here is almost ready. We might give it another little chance to crust up a little bit more. So we'll rest that up now for a few minutes. Now you're using a hard wood here, you just continue to, to Burn yeah, we can continue to burn hardwood and get the embers going. So all the hardwood that we have comes from trees that have been felled for anywhere between seven and ten years. So the older the wood, the less smoke you get, the less oils that are in there. So we have a look at now. That's got a nice little crust on it there. So we've got really hot, sort of medium heat, and then a slower heat. And it just makes sense. I mean, if you've got something that's this thick, yep. something that's that thick, and then something that's that thick, they're all going to take different times to cook. So this, is, this one here is pretty much ready now. We'll rest that for about five minutes and then before we serve it, we'll put it back onto the grill and just give it some heat. Okay, well that's got a good amount of color on it now. Um, and then our fillet here, it's just slowly ticking away. So while that's cooking, that's probably gonna be another 10 minutes uh, cooking there, maybe probably five minutes actually to get it up to medium rare. Uh, while that's cooking, we might carve some of the steaks and have a look at the insides of them. This steak here has been resting for about five minutes, so both of these are, are, are pretty much good to go. So we'll cut this, uh, this one came off first, so we'll give that a bit of a, a, a carb first. 
So it cuts straight through the middle of that. You can see it's nice and pink through the center there. When chefs tend to eat steaks, uh, we cut them very, very thin, as thin as we can possibly get them. Uh, the Japanese who are sort of known for some of the best beef in the world, they, they always will carve their steaks and they'll carve them thin. And we have guests here like, why are you carving our steaks? Do you not, do you not trust you know, whatever's going on? But to eat a piece of meat, some people don't realize that they'll cut a massive chunk. Yeah. When you cut a massive chunk, trying to chew that where cutting against the grain here is just such a nicer way to do it. So you can see that that meat there, I mean, that's making me very hungry now. So we've got our, our flank steak there. This one here, we've got the, the scotchy. So once again, we would carve this. Um, so they're the, two, they're the two steaks that we cooked on the fire and you can see that they come off. They're just nicely pink in the middle. They're nicely rested um, and they'll be the most tender because um, they've been cooked at a nice level, uh, at a level where it's hot and it's fast and then you rest. Um, when you when you cook on a, on a slower heat and then you pull it straight off and, and eat it, you don't get that, uh, the meat sort of all just sets and then it'll bleed a lot. Like you can see that hasn't bled very much at all. That's this fillet here, it's been sitting here for a bit long while we were cooking the others. So it's it's gone a little bit cold now, but you can see the, uh, probably going to a sort of a, a medium, we call that a, bit, a, a medium, but it's probably medium rare, to, to be honest. Um, and most people really enjoy it in, in meat like that. Like it's, it's got that beautiful sheen through the middle of it. And this is the pan fried scotch. Now this has been sitting for a little bit longer, so it's obviously going to be cooked a little bit more. Yeah, it's, it's just rested up, but I mean, it, it, it hasn't really cooked through the middle of it. It's fantastic. So if you have a look at that there, you know, the crust of that meat and that, that beautiful pinkness through there. You can tell that's good quality meat. Grass fed, as I said, anyone who's eats a lot of meat or knows a lot about meat will always choose a grass fed over a, over a grain fed any day. I think the flavours you get out of grass fed are so much much better, they're stronger. I like the ethics of the animal being outside all the time. Yeah. Uh, it makes sense for a lot of reasons. Thank you so much, mate. You are a sensation. Yeah, I'll see you in <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. No worries. Good on you.